Hello and welcome to US to G360. I'm Dilbar Shatterson. To sell supermarket goods, some of the nation's largest brands use images that consumers might trust. For example, the little red boxes with the pretty lady who holds her basket full of grapes. She is perfect. She is young. She is also always fair-skinned. But this portrait didn't quite fit what we saw in grape country, Fresno, California. As per Charles Colby's report on the California raisin industry, raisin grape culture was introduced into the San Joaquin Valley in 1873. Almost a century and a half later, you can only imagine how much the raisin and grape industry has grown there, but also how much growers actually rely on dainty young ladies to work their fields. Let's meet Stephen Roon from Tsiji's 20-year-old medical foundation to learn about the work that he and his team are doing to alleviate the hardships of the people you won't see on a box of raisins. I started joining Tsiji because of my wife was introduced Tsiji to me. There's, uh, she asked me to come and look for a uh, volunteer at Tsiji during weekend. Stephen found a uh, Fresno Tsiji office and he started joining Tsiji and it's very uh, grateful that Stephen and I are doing to get uh, Tsiji together, even our two young kids. 1.5 million Mexicans are living in Central Valley. 80% of them are undocumented uh, people. And this area is, the number one is agriculture. I'm visiting the fields in my last four months. Trabajo desde mucho tiempo en el field y pues es un poco dificultoso, pero estamos acostumbrados. Pues si tuviéramos dinero no veníamos aquí. Es muy duro el trabajo que nos da. Nos levantamos a las 4 de la mañana, a las 3 de la mañana para irnos a trabajar. Muchos como yo casi no tenemos aseguranza para ir al doctor, pues casi no vamos. Te va, va, los pedidos que te hacen, tiene uno que cumplir. Todo lo que te piden, no, no tiene uno que hacer. Cualquier accidente es resbalarse o caerse. Tenemos que solventarlo nosotros mismos. No tener seguridad, pues no tiene uno papeles. O sea, tenemos mucha necesidad, pues, para obtener esa seguridad o algo que nos cure. El 99% la desesperación de que tener un seguro médico que nos ayude en un programa o algo. It's not easy. Yes. I can do this. <laughs> really, it's my respect to these people because thanks to them we have food. The mobile clinic we have is, we opened it since May 2012. We have it every Tuesday, 9 to 2. Welcome, welcome to our office here. Thank you, can we have a look? Sure, come in, come in, have a look, yeah. Soon there will be dental, okay? And this one is our conference room. Then we have a planning is uh, probably acupuncture room, but this location is for follow-up. When they go money clinic, they come back here. Then our doctor have a patient chart and follow-up. I love medicine because I love life. And I found that just like anybody's life, they can be struck by cancer. I had it twice. That's what, I, that's what brought me here in the sense that I got to do something for other people. At the end of the day, I was tired, but it was, I was exhilarated. And I thought, I think I'll do this again. In about three years now, I think, I'm working on my third year. Part of the reason why I show up is that it's a pleasure helping people. We are lucky this building is a 5,000 square feet building. Like we just came back from Modesto. So everything will be put here, re, uh, clean up, restock for this coming week uh, event in Fresno. So we have a storeroom to lock all the patient charts, eh? at least 10 to 15,000 files. On the map that we go through, the one that Fresno organized all the outreach, yeah, we try to slowly go into digital version. With that, we have Sister Olivia, Brother Ron, that helped us to write a year chart. During the event, we can able to capture all the medical data. Okay, this is the screen that we're going to see. And we have register a patient, uh, enter patient treatment, treatment information, and we do survey. Right after we enter the patient ID, the patient information will be sent. We found that it's very efficient and it only takes us two to three seconds to complete one patient registration. By end of the day, we're able to save at least eight hours. We eager for the student how they try another so, hour. Okay. Now we do practices. Oh, that's good.
You'll be okay, man. Don't worry. <laughs> be good, okay? Bye-bye. Open the trunk. Okay. Every day, drop off the kids and uh, and then go to meetings and do suchi stuff after that. So that's about the routine every day here. Yeah. Oh, we no, don't have time to cook for them so that we can do suchi stuff. Really. mobile on that day to provide a uh, flu shot. The cost of doing a flu shot by itself, it probably costs about 50, uh, $25 if you want to do it, pay yourself to get a flu shot. And we provide them free. I was also asked to give for flu shots. And we will give over hundreds at a time. And that was always nice to do because you're helping people. Majority of the people there on that day are first time. Uh, doing flu shot. Va a ser la primera vez. Okay, gracias. ¿Y en qué trabaja? En la uva. En la uva. It's my first time getting a flu shot. My first time a uh, flu shot. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you for thank you thank you. Yeah. Your, are your time yeah. here? They work about fifteen twenty dollars a day, and. Uh, that's really one day of work going to a flu shot. Okay, yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. And on that day, we were able to see about 46 patients with flu shot. And I think it's a pretty good turnout. Because we have a very tight schedule on that day, because the after, right after that, we have to go back to get a truck and a load for loading for set up that evening for the next day outreach in Fresno City College. Usually we load, probably take, what, five, six of us go loading a whole truck of 24-foot truck with heavy equipment, everything. I had to climb onto the cabinets that we make, the impromptu uh, cabinets, and put chairs up and put other items up, but you don't really think about how tired you are. And so we had the Cebus here, we had uh, another volunteer, um, Paul, and the ladies, the great spirit, great heart, the Sigus, and moved that, all of that from here to Fresno City College. Because uh, we average about 15 to 18 uh, outreach a year. Load it up, load it down, clean it, and load it up again. Majority of the core team of Suchi medical team in Fresno are female. Average about 60 years old, all of them. And uh, we are very grateful of their determination and uh, belief in the med medical mission in Fresno. Okay. We're okay, huh? Uh, almost. <laughs> Always get energy. <laughs> it's a 20-foot truck. There's a lot of equipment, a lot of instruments have to put in. And uh, all those instruments are very, very heavy. You have to lift up and down by 6 o'clock a little bit at the Fresno City College where the event is. Then probably take us another two and a half to three hours to unload the truck and set up the whole event. And then we need to set up all the equipment for dentists, just like a little hospital. <laughs> By the time everybody get done on that night before the event, is go home about probably 10 o'clock at night. And uh, that's pretty much standard what we always happen in every clinic we do. As you just saw, volunteers will go through a lot of physical hardship, a part of the story that's not usually emphasized. Moreover, another aspect that isn't advertised among volunteers is the personal sacrifices they make for the sake of altruism. According to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, an organism is said to behave altruistically when its behavior benefits other organisms at a cost to itself. Yes, Tsuji volunteers devote themselves to serving others without reward, but what is the cost? How much can we give, but also how much can we afford to sacrifice? 
This is one of the most complicated and unspoken issues that SIGI volunteers will face. Let's go see the progress of this year's outreach during Binational Health Week, where we'll understand the passion, but also the challenges that confront its many volunteers. Let me show you uh, where we are volunteer, get our local volunteer and doctors come and sign up. We just log into our Fresno website, sign up for volunteer. They just click in, let's say they want to come to the October event. Then you go into the web here, all this information all listed here. So. I think Fresno the only one that used this uh, f method to approach our medical provider. Right now, we would like to start the opening about talking about the National Health Week. Without the Suchi Clinic, our progress with our services could not have happened. We do every month our clinic. You can refer all your clients to us. Yeah, we provide health care and they provide health information. So our focus has been, those three, has been the, the immigrant population, the uninsured, as well as, you know, low-income communities. I think, you know, the partnership that we have with Su Chi uh, is just the best progression we could have ever had with Binational. Uh, the first person that got there said he was there by about 2.30 in the morning, so I try to get out there as early as I can. I think the best is always just being out there and interacting with the patients, even though I may not have a lot of time, even in that moment that I'm able to make that announcement or maybe give that ticket or maybe interact with one of the kids that's running around having fun, um, you know, oblivious to what's going on, but even that small connection, that for me brings great joy. trabajo from nobody to now, we pull about 150 volunteers and 50 committee group volunteers. And that's a unique part of Fresno. We use a lot of community partners and community volunteers to support this event. For me, I want my students to give back to the community. They have a skill that they can share with people. Get a toothbrush? Oh, look, that right. <laughs> when I see them here like this, it makes me feel very proud of them, first of all. Well, I will just say that these are some of the hardest working people I've ever seen in my life. And um, you can just see the dedication. And it's so calm in here. There are so many people here. And by far, I wouldn't change anything. It was so cool seeing everyone smile on their faces and being able to make their day. My first patient who came in, she was so grateful when she sat down in the chair and she hadn't had any dental insurance and when I got finished cleaning her, she could not say thank you enough. Our doctors in Fresno, we have pretty much at least 30 plus provider that consistently come to Fresno. Like, for example, Dr. Fong, he joined in 2001 with us, and he's a Christ based Baptist Christian, and he's a very good doctor, and he's a very detailed doctor. And also Dr. Fruz, he's a, a joined us probably two years ago, and he never missed a single event with us, because he so believed in uh, the mission, what we do in, uh, for the people. And also we have a uh, Muslim uh, doctor, Dr. Martin, and he's a retired doctor now, used to work for Kaiser, and he's very supportive with us. We always consider, always have a lot of volunteers get touched. I was told that 
we have 15 new applications of volunteer on that day. I saw the way the doctors were interacting with the patients mm -hmm. and they were showed real concern for the people and that touched my heart. So, yeah. I want to volunteer. I want to be a part of what the organization is doing. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. And that's from the heart that we're able to do something for the poor and that's why I love this place. It's the thought that you can help other people after we, you being received help, see? It felt very good volunteering here, and I got the chance to change the dressing of a uh -huh. patient today, uh -huh. and that was a good experience for me. Uh -huh. And it felt good, good helping. Yeah. You feel good yes. helping them, yes. huh? Glad to see yes, you. Yes, yes, nice meeting you. Glad Thank you. you. Steven is a very committed volunteer. Sometimes he's moving too fast. <laughs> That's his name. Personally, she's my wife and give me a lot of support. In our life, it's kind of like you cannot separate from Tsujiu. Wherever we go, whatever topic that we talk about in the car, right, 50% belong to Tsujiu. I can consider when my journey in Tsujiu is very uh, lucky because uh, I have a very supporting wife and uh, my kid understand we go everywhere together with the kids and uh, as long as the kids not in school we have outreach we go in usually outreach my kid usually help up do make, make balloons give it to them, cheer them up. And before the event, usually she will help us move the chair, arrange the chair, patient chair, lift the chair, all those things. So over the years, she know my daughters, Alvina and Brianna, I can see from my kid is they build up their compassion. Like they, sometimes they kind of prefer to do activity compared to school activity. Yeah, and um, they're always so proud in school there, they said. Uh, and they said they want to be like a daddy, can go to Haiti and help people. The teacher asked the right and say, how to give a, what you want to do with a pot of gold to the class. Right, I said, what do you want to do? Most of the classmates say, I want to buy a toys, Nintendo, PlayStation. My daughter was right, say, I'll give it to the, my dad to build a house in Haiti, you see. In first grade, the teacher asked, asked her, what are you going to be when you are grown, you grown up? She said she wanted to be a housewife. Then the teacher asked her why. And she said, I want to be my mommy. Then uh, she take good care of us, and she contribute all her time to do tzuji, uh, to help people. Okay, bye, see you guys later. I go. Leave the house at 5 o'clock morning or 4 o'clock morning sometime. And uh, by the time I go home, it's really 1 or 2 o'clock midnight. And uh, I hardly see my daughter. Then my wife only showed me the, the newspaper that wrote. Every week, one kid will bring home uh, a piece of paper. Like They have to write all about themselves and who are their hero and uh, what they like. And uh, uh, one day, Avina brought brought the news, the poster back, and and she always uh, set her daddy as her a role model. Yeah, and uh, Steven's kind of very touched. And I don't have a, a, a luxury to spend a lot of time uh, with my daughter, go to movie, or go to uh, see a show, or go to a friend party. Because every weekend, they go to outreach. <laughs> they go somewhere, go do suji. It's very grateful, my kids, my, my wife, that support and work along with me to volunteer, to serve. 
¿Cómo está tu limpieza de dientes, mamá? Bien. Yo tenía la agricultura, la agricultura y tenía la agricultura. Tenía la dental, la agricultura y mi agricultura también. Y a la gente que les interesa que vengan porque sí ayudan mucho. Esto es el trabajo que Suchi hace. This is the work that needs, you know, to be recognized how wonderful they are. This year is our 20 year anniversary for the medical mission in the U.S. And we, for Fresno, we just had our 10 year anniversary too, see. At the end of the day, we was able to help 200 old patients so far since 2002 until now. We are able to help approximately 13,000 13, patients and with 60, over 60,000 services in dental, medical, uh, acupuncture, vision, and uh, chiropractor. And also, we're able to save the county about $7 million. One year is no time. <laughs> until I'm, I cannot move. I will warranty until I cannot move. There'll probably some, be another, you know, young, uh, hopefully dedicated volunteer that will come, and I'll be the the she helping to load um, however I can, trying to prevent injury. <laughs> but um, so I'll be here for for the long haul. Unless I'm limited by mental incapacity or physical incapacity, I don't see any reason to quit. I look forward to it because it's a gift, and it's so pleasurable to give. And Chisuchi offers. <laughs> that opportunity, you know, and our differences in culture mean nothing. It's the heart. Okay, through the 12 years, it's been an experience for me that I love and will never forget. I will do this until God says I can't, which is when I die. After the outreach, everybody feels so exhausted, but inside our heart, we feel so happy because we're able to see so many patients and help them. A lot of people say uh, medical mission is very hard to do, and you have to be a doctor to do it. And with myself, a background with finance and no medical history at all, we still, and all our core team, not a one, single one of them is in the medical field, but we believe in what we're doing. We just take extra time to learn it. As we celebrate the Tsuji Medical Foundation's 20th anniversary this month, we also celebrate the many volunteers that help bring necessary medical aid to the underserved in the U.S. And as you've seen, being a volunteer is demanding. But for those whose tears flow over the act of giving, it is their dedication that is perhaps among the most sincere. In fact, it was Master Jiang Yan who said that giving is not the privilege of the rich, it is the privilege of the sincere. Until the next anniversary, we can only wait to see the new faces to help them bring wellness across the U.S. Special thanks to the medical team and all its little helpers in California. And thank you for joining us. I'm Dilbar Shatterson, and I'll see you next time.